Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today we're going to be covering 1 Kings 10 through 11 and Luke 21, 20 through 38. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. The Queen of Sheba Visits Solomon 1 Kings 10 When the Queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a vast, great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold, and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her mind. Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attendant attending, servants in their robes, his cup bearers and the burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, I report I heard in my the report I heard in my country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told to me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel. He has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. And she gave the king 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices, and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Haram's ships brought gold from Ophir, and from these they bought great cargoes of alumg wood and precious stones. The king used the alum wood to make supports for the temple of the Lord and for the royal palace, and to make harps and lyres for the musicians. So much alum wood had never been imported or seen since that day. King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for besides what he had given her out of his royal bounty. Then she left and returned with her retinue to her own country. The weight of the gold that Solomon received yearly was 666 talents, not including the re revenues from merchants and traders, and from all the Arabian kings and the governors of the, the territories. King Solomon made two hundred large sh shields of hammered gold. Six hundred shekels of gold went into each shield. He also made three hundred small shields of hammered gold with three minons. Of gold in each shield. The king put them in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. In the, in the palace of the forest of Lebanon. And then the king made a great throne covered with ivory and overlaid with fine gold. The throne had six steps and its back had a rounded top on 
both sides of the seat were armrests with a lion standing beside each of them. Twelve lions stood on the six steps, one at either end of each step. Nothing like it had ever been made for any other kingdom. All King Solomon's uh, goblets were gold, and all the household articles in the palace for the, uh, of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold. Nothing was made of silver, because silver was considered of little value in Solomon's day. So the king had a fleet of trading ships at sea, along with the ships of Harem. Once every three years it returned carrying gold, silver, and ivory, and apes and, ba apes and baboons. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all the other kings of the earth. The whole world sought audience with Solomon to hear his wisdom God had put in his heart. Year after year, everyone who came brought a gift, articles of silver and gold, robes, weapons, and spices, and horses and mules. Solomon accumulated chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot city and also with him in Jerusalem. The king made silver and as common as in Jerusalem as stones and cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Kew. The royal merchants purchased them from Kew at the current price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for a hundred and fifty. They also imported, exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and of the Armenians. Armin's Solomon's Wives 1 Kings 11 King Solomon, however, loved many foreign women besides Pharaoh's daughter, Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonites, and Hittites. They were from nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, You must not intermarry with them, because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him astray. As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord in his God as the heart of David had, his father had been. He followed Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonite, Sidonians, and Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, and David his father has David his father had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Chesemash, the detestable god of Moab, and for Moloch, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all his foreign wives, who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. The Lord became angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. Although he had forbidden Solomon to follow other gods, Solomon did not keep the Lord's command. So the Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude, you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, which I commanded you. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. 
Nevertheless, for the sake of David your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. I will tear it out and hand it of your son. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. Yet I will not tear the whole kingdom from him, but will give him one tribe for the sake of David, my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. Solomon's Adversaries Then the Lord raised up against Solomon an adversary, Hadad the Edomite, from the royal line of Edom. Earlier, when David was fighting with Edom, Joab, the commander of the army who had gone up to bury the dead, had struck down all the men in Edom. Joab and all the Israelites stayed there for six months until they had destroyed all the men in Edom. But Hadad, still only a boy, fled to Egypt with some Edomites officials who had served his father. They set out from Midian and went to Paran. Then, taking people from Paran with them, they went to Egypt, to Pharaoh king of Egypt, who gave Hadad a horse and land and provided him with food. Pharaoh was so pleased with Hadad that he gave him a sister of his own wife, Queen Tophonus, in marriage. The sister of Tophonus bore him a son named Ginnabath, whom Tophonus brought up in the royal palace. Then there Ginnabath lived with Pharaoh's own children. While he was in Egypt, Hadad heard that David rested with his ancestors, and that Joab, the commander of the armies, was also dead. Then Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me go, that I may return to my own country. What have you lacked here, that you want to go back to your own country? Pharaoh asked. Nothing, Hadad said, but do let me go. And God raised up against Solomon any another adversary, Rezon, son of Elidia, who had fled from his master, Hadadazar, king of Zabah. When David destroyed Zobah's armies, Rezon gathered a band of men around him and became their leader. They went to Damascus, where they settled and took control. Rezon was Israel's adversary as long as Solomon lived, adding to the trouble caused by Hadad. So Rezon ruled in, in, in Aram and was hostile towards Israel. Also, Jeroboam, son of Nebat, rebelled against the king. He was once one of Solomon's officials, an Ephraimite from Zerada, and his mother was a widow named Zura. Here in the account uh, here is the account of how he rebelled against the king. Solomon had built the terraces and had filled in the gap in the wall of the city of David, his father. Now Jeroboam was a man of standing, and when Solomon saw how well the young man did his work, he put him in charge of the whole labor force of the tribes of Joseph. About that time, Jeroboam was going out of Jerusalem, and Ahijah, the prophet of Shiloh, met him on the way wearing a new cloak. The two of them were alone out in the country, and Ahijah took hold of the new cloak he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces. Then he said to Jeroboam, 
take ten pieces for yourself, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. See, I am going to tear the kingdom out of Solomon's hands and give you ten tribes. But for the sake of my servant David and the city of Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, he will have one tribe. I will do this because they have forsaken me and worshipped Ashoroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, Shemarash, the god of the Moabites, and Molech, the god of the Ammonites, and have not walked in obedience to me nor done what is right in my eyes, nor kept my decrees and laws as David, Solomon's father, did. But I will not take the whole kingdom of so out of Solomon's hand. I have made him ruler all the days of his life for the sake of David, my servant, whom I chose and who obeyed my commands and decrees. I will take the kingdom from his son's hands and give you ten tribes. I will give one tribe to his son so that David, my servant, may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I chose to put my name. However, as for you, I will take you and you will rule over all that your heart desires. You will be king over Israel. If you do whatever I command you and walk in obedience to me and do what is right in my eyes by obeying my decrees and commands, as David my servant did, I will be with you. I will build you a dynasty as enduring as the one I built for David and will give Israel to you. I will humble David's descendants because of this, but not forever. Solomon tried to kill Jeroboam, but Jeroboam fled to Egypt, to Shishka the king, and stayed there until Solomon's death. Solomon's death, king, 1 Kings 11.41 as for the other events of Solomon's reign, all he did and the wisdom he displayed, are they not written in the book of the annuals of Solomon? Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years. Then he rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, succeeded him as king. Okay, that was 1 Kings 10 through 11. Now we will be turning to Luke 21, 20. Luke 21, verse 20. Okay, here we go. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out, and let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for the pregnant woman and nursing mothers. They will be great to end. There will be great distresses in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and it will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror 
apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with powerful and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the fence of the whole earth. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Each day Jesus was teaching at the temple, and each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives. And all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. Okay, that was Luke 21, uh, 21, 20 through 38, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 1 Kings 12 through 13 and Luke 22, 1 through 20. Father, I just thank you for your word because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. So I thank you. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Okay, hey, that does it for the Bible with Frisco 2020 for today. Uh, as always, you know, God loves you. Come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here. And I hope that you are too.